G'day, I'm Warwick Schiller and today I want to talk to you a little bit about a question I get asked oh, a fair bit and it's about the spooky end of the arena. Like, you know, usually the spooky end of the arena is on the far end of the arena and a lot of people have trouble with, with that. And, you know, before you start worrying about the spooky end of the arena, which is a push, it's something pushing your horse away, you really want to make sure there's no pull from you know a gravitational pull from other horses or the barn because it just makes it worse and I've got a I captured this on film here recently or in the last year in a couple of places one was um, and we weren't working on the spooky end of the arena but I just kept captured stuff on film but one was a uh, a Grand Prix dressage rider came here uh, for some help with a young warm blood and uh, one of the things I wanted to do with that horse was turn it loose and see where it wanted to go. Now these banners behind me used to be on the far end of my arena. I've moved them since. But so over on this side is my barn. Those banners were on the far end of the arena. And this horse, <coughs> um, you know, when I had her turn loose, all it wanted to do was go over and stand at the gate. And so we just did our work over there, whatever work she wanted, whatever work she wanted to do, lateral work, bending work, whatever, whatever work she wanted to do, we did it over there. And the first time we turned loose of that horse after doing that work and let it see where it wanted to go, it walked straight along this fence down here, or down and around that corner. But then when it saw those banners, it cut in a long way. And I said to her, don't worry about, just ignore the banners, okay? So the horse came in quite a ways off that fence pushing away from those banners. Then it came back down here and it stopped at the gate again. We did some more work at the gate. Then it went up there a second time. It went a lot closer to the banners the second time. And then it came back down here and we ended up doing some more work. And the third time it went up there, it walked past those banners on a loose rein without us actually addressing the banners. And, and I think by the end, she was here for a couple of days. I think by the end of that whole session, I got to writing this previously unstable young warm blood around uh, with no bridle on him and uh, he would just go right by that with with no, either nothing on his head and we didn't address the banners what we did address was the pull from down here and then I had something similar at a, a clinic in Ireland last year too there was a girl and uh, the first day of the clinic she hopped on a horse and the first thing she wanted to do was go to the other end of the arena and make a horse look at the scary thing which happened to be my son he was on the video camera he was up on uh, you know like a, a platform outside the arena but the first thing she wanted to do is make a horse go up there and look at it and you can see in the footage here that horse looks at it and it's kind of quite concerned about it and uh, I said I oh, don't worry about that but there was a horse down the other end of the arena that that horse was attracted to and so all we did was all our work around uh, the place it was attracted to the thing that was pulling that horse and then we started resting up the other end of the arena and it didn't take very long for that horse to go up the other end of the arena and actively seek that spot and it wasn't really concerned about the the scary thing at all so just something to think about before you worry about your horse being concerned about going in that direction you want to make sure your horse is not thinking about going in that direction i think i see you know i hear this a lot on trail rides people go you know i was riding my horse along he gets to a spot and he kind of spooks and i can't get him to go and I'll ask those people, well, how is he going out there? He's like, does he just go on a loose rein? Like if you turn loose, he wouldn't turn around and go home. Oh no, he kind of wants to go home. So you've got that home pulling you quite a bit. And then you get to something that pushes you a little bit. It really, it really makes it worse. So if you can get rid of that attraction to something first, usually the thing on the other end goes away. I mean, you know, I don't know if this is a good analogy or not, but if you think about it, you've got that one closet in your house and you open it up and you shove something on top of the pile and it's always, coming this way okay it's not running away from the back wall of the closet it's trying to come down this way because it's sloped that way if you can unstack everything and stack it so it's level then you put something on top it just stays there and so my wife's looking at me like that's a dumb analogy but anyway i just used it anyway so anyway hope that helps drove and i say see you guys next time